How are we doing today, students? I hope you're having the best day of your life. Today we're gonna to talk about the work energy theorem and how energy is gonna be conserved when there is no non-conservative forces. All right, and guys, for non-conservative forces, essentially what we're gonna be dealing with are things like tension and friction energies and works that are not conserved. And you'll see it when I give a little bit of example. But essentially what we're gonna see is that the work is gonna be equal to a change in energy. And in this video and in these examples, the two types of energies that we're gonna be talking about are the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy. And pretty much what the work energy theorem tells us is that the sum of the energies UG plus KE is going to be equal to the work. So if energy changes, work needs to change, all right? And this is gonna be conserved. So essentially, any change in energy before has to equal the change in energy after. All right, there's gonna be a conversion of Ke into potential energy or Ug into kinetic energy. All right, so those are gonna be the basic ones that we're gonna look at in this video and how that's the case. All right, so to do so, let's take an object that is um, at some height, okay? This object is at some height above the ground. And we'll say that this position is zero meters and this position we'll say is two meters. And this has a mass equal to one kilogram, okay? Now, as it is standing there, because it has some delta Y, some change upward, it has gained gravitational potential energy, which is equal to mg delta y, okay? So my mass is one kilogram. We'll call gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, 10 meters per second squared, and our height is going to be two meters. So right now, as that object sits, it has a potential energy of 20 joules. Now, once I let that object go, it is now going to be in free fall. And as I sit over here before I am dropped, currently if I looked at the total energy, E total, I just have UG because KE, that's equal to zero because the speed of that object is zero. Okay, so in the beginning, I just had UG. But now as I enter free fall, my speed increases. My speed increases. And my delta Y decreases. So essentially what we're going to have is as speed increases, KE has to go up. And UG, because height decreases, has to go down. And just before this object hits the ground right here, the instant before it hits the ground, we'll say that all of the UG gets converted into KE. And this allows us to solve for things like the speed just before it hits. Okay, now how would we do that? Well, we would say, okay, just before that object hits the ground, right, the energy total before it hits the ground is going to be equal to UG plus KE. But just before it hits the ground, delta Y equals zero. So we can make this whole term go to zero joules. So at the bottom, the only thing left is one half MV squared. So we put, we put the before, set that equal to the end because that's the conservation, and we say that mg delta y 
before has to be equal to one half m v squared after. Okay, and we see there's a little bit of awesome math we can do here. We can get rid of this. Those go away. Okay, and we can see after some algebra that v equals the square root of 2g delta y. Essentially, I multiplied both sides by 2 to get rid of this. That brought the 2 over here. And then I took the square root and I got 2gy square root. So this is how we find the speed of an object that has fallen using the conservation of energy. This can be used the opposite way as well. If we wanted to figure out how high an object is going to go, we could do the same using these same rules. So we want to know how high did an object go. Well, we say that I have a block and it is fired upward with some initial speed equal to 10 meters per second, okay? And we'll just say that it has a mass of one kilogram. We might see later that that does not matter. And it starts initially at an x equals zero meters. So there is no delta y initially. So what we're going to look at is we're going to see that e total before has to equal e total after, OK? Because mechanical energy is conserved. And mechanical energy just means total energy. So before, I have possibly some ug plus ke. There is no friction, so I don't have to worry about the work done by friction just yet. And after, we're going to have some ug plus ke. So let's look at the before scenarios. I said that once again, delta y equals zero. So this whole UG is going to go to zero joules. But we are going to have some initial speed. So there's definitely going to be a one half mv squared before. Okay. Now when I look at the after, I know that it's going to travel up to some height that we don't know. That's what we want to solve for, how high. So I'm going to plug in mg delta y, and I know this is the variable that I'm going to solve for. And from kinematics, we know that when it gets to this height, what is the speed at max height? Well, that's zero meters per second, okay? So that means that if v equals zero meters per second, this whole term here is going to go to zero joules as well. So now when we have our zeros, once again, we can get rid of our m's, and we can say that one half v squared initially equals g delta y. So that's it nice and clean, okay? After we do that, we can say that this is going to be equal to one half v squared divided by g. That's going to equal delta y. Okay. And if you wanted to plug that in, you would just see 1 half equals 10 squared over 10 equals delta y. Okay. 1 half 100 divided by 10 equals delta y. Delta y equals 5 meters. Okay, guys? So that is how you can use the conservation of energy before and after. In the next video, we're going to add the work done by friction. Okay, we're going to add some non-conservative forces in, and you'll see exactly how we solve for that. If you have any questions about this, just leave them down below. I'll be sure to get to them. Have yourself a great day.